Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob with Diligent Dev, and today we're gonna to be talking about automatic image resizing with Firebase, in particular, Firebase functions. Now this is gonna build on top of an existing project that we've already done, and I'll link that in the video description below, and you should see it somewhere on the screen right now, but let's get right into it. All right, so here we are at our Firebase image upload project. Like I said, that we created in another video. And the first thing we need to do, if you don't already have it installed, is install Firebase tools, and we're gonna do it globally. So we'll say npm install dash g for global Firebase dash tools. And this will take a second to run, so once it's done, I'll be right back. Okay, so the Firebase tools have installed, and now we need to sync our Firebase CLI with our account on Firebase. So we're gonna say Firebase login. You can choose whatever you want here. I'll allow them to collect anonymous data. And then you'll get presented with a screen to log in. It'll launch in the browser and go ahead and just log into your account. And it's been synced and we're ready to go. So now that we have it installed and synced to our account, all we need to do is init Firebase in our current project. And to do that, we're just going to run Firebase init. It's gonna ask you what features you'd like to include in your project. And for us right now, I'm just gonna say functions, but you can install all of them. That's completely fine. Then it's gonna ask you if you want to use an existing project. And we are, we're going to choose the Firebase image uploader. It's gonna ask us what language we'd like to write our cloud functions in. I'm going to choose JavaScript. Do you want to use ESLint? We're gonna say yes. Do you want to install dependencies now? Yes. And this is gonna take a second to run and I will be right back when it's finished. So now that Firebase has been initialized in our project, you'll see we have a new functions folder here. And inside this functions folder, we've got a lot of stuff. Basically, this is just a self-contained project inside of our project. So what you got here is our index.js, which we'll be writing all of our code, some package.json files to keep track of our packages, some ESLint files, and some node modules. Now to get started, we need to install a couple dependencies that we'll be using to resize our images. So what we're gonna do is cd into our functions folder, and then we're going to install npm install at google-cloud slash storage. We're gonna install another dependency called sharp, another called fs extra, and one more called uuid. And I'm gonna let those install, and then I'll be right back. So finally, the setup is complete. We have Firebase initialized in our project and synced to our Firebase account and all the dependencies that we're going to be needing to continue to code. Now, the first thing we wanna do is get rid of all this stuff here, and then we're going to create a function that fires every single time an object is uploaded to our storage bucket. So I'm gonna say exports.resize images, and this is gonna equal functions dot storage dot object and then on finalize and this will be an async function and we're going to pass it the object that gets put in and we're ready to code so before we get started inside of our function let's go ahead and import everything that we're going to need for this so we'll say const storage equals require Google oh, at Google Cloud Functions dash storage or slash storage. And then we'll say const Google Cloud Storage or GCS equals new storage. If I can type today. We'll say const sharp equals require sharp const fs equals require fs extra const os equals require and os stands for operating system. const path equals require 
path and const UUID equals require UUID. Okay, so now we have all our dependencies imported into this file. So the first thing we're going to do is wrap everything in a try catch block. And if it errors, we're just going to console dot log error. Now what this will do is instead of console logging like you're used to in the browser, if you go to Firebase, you go to your functions, then you go to the logs. If you're getting any errors, this will console log it to your logs inside of Firebase. So I'm going to format this and we'll keep going. So the first thing we're going to do is generate a unique identifier and we'll use this for temp directories so that when the files are uploading, it's not going to create the same directories and throw errors inside of the project. So we'll say const unique name equals UID dash V1. Next thing we're going to do is grab the bucket, the original bucket that the file was uploaded to. So we'll say const bucket equals GCS dot bucket. And we're going to get that off the object that is passed in and the bucket. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a directory for the bucket. So we'll say const file path equals object dot name. Then we're going to grab the file name. And we'll do that by running a split. And popping off. Next we'll grab bucket directory. Then we're going to create some temp working directories to process our images out of. So we'll say const working dir equals path dot join. We'll say os dot temp directory. And we'll say images underscore and pass that unique name that we created above. Then we'll say const temp file path equals path dot join and we'll join our working directory and then we'll just say source underscore we'll pass it that unique name again and we'll put a file extension of png on it. So since this is going to fire every single time that a new image gets uploaded to a bucket, we don't want it to fire if it's not an image or if it's an image that we've already processed. So the way that we're going to check that is we're going to say if file name dot includes image at, and you'll see how we're using this below, but it's going to check to see if the file name includes image dot image at, and we want to say if it, if the object content type dot includes image. So if it's not an image, we just want to return false. I'll format this and we'll keep going. The next thing we're going to do is ensure that our working directory exists. So we'll say await fs.ensure working directory. Then we're going to download the source file by saying await bucket.file, pass it the file path dot download and we're going to pass it a destination equal to our temp file path. Okay. 
And then what I want to do is create four different images or four different resized images. I'm going to create two avatar images and two 16 by nine. So I'm going to say const sizes equals an array. I'm going to say 128, 256, 300, and 600. And you can choose whatever you'd like here. This is just very common sizes. So we'll say const upload promises equals sizes. And we're going to map over them. And we're going to pass in async sizes. So we'll pass the size into our map function. So in here, we're going to say const thumbname equals image at pass it the size. And then we'll pass it the file name. Next, we'll say const thumb path equals path dot join. And we'll give it the working directory and the thumb name that we just created. Next, we're going to say if size is less than 300. And what we're going to do inside of this if block is create our avatar images. So we'll say await sharp. We'll pass it the temp file path. And we'll say resize. And since we want the height and the width to be the exact same for avatar images, we're just going to pass size and size. And then we're going to say to file and pass it our thumb path. We'll format this so it looks pretty. We'll create an else block. And what we're going to do here is create 16 by 9 images. So we'll say let height equal math dot floor size and we'll multiply size by 0 0.5625 which should give us a 16.9 16 by 9 aspect ratio and we'll say await sharp pass it the temp file path say resize Say size and height. Say to file and pass it the thumb path. And we'll go ahead and format that. The last thing we're going to do inside of our map is return bucket dot upload thumb path. And then we're going to say destination and set that equal path dot join the bucket directory and our thumb name. Next, we're going to process all of these promises because you do not want to do it inside of any iteration such as map for performance reasons. So we'll say await promise dot all upload promises. And the last thing that we'll do, not the last thing we'll do, but we will remove our temp directory. So we'll say await fs dot remove the working directory. And then we're going to await fs.remove the bucket directory so we don't clutter up our OS directories. And then the last thing we'll do is return promise.resolve. And that reminds me down here inside of our catch block, we need to, after the console.log statement, return promise 
dot reject and pass it the error because every single Firebase function needs to return some sort of promise out of it. So now that we have that all done, we're ready to deploy our function. To do that, run the command Firebase, deploy dash dash only functions. And this will upload our Firebase functions to the cloud. So once this is finished, I'll be right back. So now that our Firebase functions have uploaded to the cloud successfully, go ahead and log into console.firebase.google.com. And we're gonna head over here to the Functions tab. And you'll see that our Firebase function has uploaded successfully and it's ready to go. You can check a lot of things like health, the logs, your usage statistics. But what we're gonna do right now is test it out. So I'm back here at the project and I'm gonna run npm run serve to run our initial view project that we created our Firebase uploader through. And now that that's running, I'm going to open it. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna upload an image. And you'll see this uploaded successfully. So let's go ahead and check our Firebase project to see that everything ran through how we expected it to. So we'll go back to storage We'll go to our images and you'll see now we have our image that we just uploaded and this is our 128 version and I believe to view this in here we have to create a new access token. I'll just go ahead and refresh the page and you'll see now we have our 128 by 128 and I'm going to go ahead and do that for every other image that we've uploaded. All right, so I've created all the access tokens for the other images, and we'll see that if we go to our original one, it's just the original size, and you can see by the size here of bytes that it's pretty large. If we go down here to our 128 by 128, you'll see it's significantly smaller, and then our 256 by 256, and then we have our 300, that's 16 by nine aspect ratio, and R600. And we can go ahead and use any of these file paths in any website that we would like. So that's gonna wrap it up for now. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, happy coding.